We have been hearing from families across the state about how important breastfeeding is to them, but some of the challenges that they encounter in breastfeeding and public breastfeeding in the workplace. And so um, I'm so excited to introduce Ellen Mon from the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition. Ellen's been an international board certified lactation consultant for over 22 years and has had the privilege to work with families and provide lactation support in a variety of clinical settings, including hospitals, WIC offices, physician offices, and her own private private practice. And for more than 25 years, Ellen has been working on lactation policy with the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition. Um, just this month, she'll be starting a role at the Central Jersey Family Health Consortium to help implement uh, New Jersey's breastfeeding strategic plan with funding from the New Jersey Department of Health. Um, so that is really exciting. She's going to talk a little bit more about that. And of course, she's a mother of three exclusively breastfed, breastfed kids who are now adults. <laughs> and I love this, Ellen. Don't wake her up in the middle of the night anymore and wish they lived a little bit closer by. I know my mom feels very similar to you as well. So Ellen, take it away. Thank you so much, Hannah. And I'm really delighted and privileged to be with you all today. Thanks for taking the time because I'm assuming that if you're here today, you, you know, either you've had challenges or you feel passionate as, as we do um, about making breastfeeding and lactation easier in the state. So Without further ado, let's talk about some of the policies and laws and other matters that can help with that. And then today, so, there we go. Um, today, just to let you know what, what we're gonna cover. Uh, we're going to cover breastfeeding in public, lactation support in maternity hospitals in New Jersey, insurance and Medicaid coverage for lactation support and breast pumps, Pumping rights in the workplace. Oh, so many inquiries about that lately. Um, so I know, um, I think probably many of you are eager to learn more about that. Lactation in childcare settings. So glad that there's some childcare providers and staff uh, joining us today. And then private insurance and Medicaid coverage for donor milk, uh, donor human milk, which is on the horizon. And I'm just gonna move something on my screen just to make it a little easier for me to see. I always forget that parts of the screen sometimes are blocked by other things. In any case, let's start out with the New Jersey public breastfeeding law. So New Jersey's had a public breastfeeding law protecting breastfeeding in public since 1997. However, we didn't need a law. It's not, it's never been illegal to breastfeed in public in New Jersey, but certainly um, there's lots of misunderstandings about it among um, businesses and those who take care of public places. So just know that the law says that notwithstanding any provision of the law to the contrary, a mother, and and I, I'm going to say that's the, I'm, I'm using the terms and the words in the original uh, law. A mother shall be entitled to breastfeed her baby in any location of a place of public accommodation, resort, or amusement where the mother is otherwise permitted. And I just want to just stop for a second, I meant to say it earlier. I strive to be inclusive um, and include and recognize that not everyone who provides human milk to their babies identifies as female or as a mother. So I'll be interchanging terms today, uh, breastfeeding, chest feeding, human milk feeding, and lactation, of course, covers all of those. Um, however, if I use the word breastfeeding, I'm either using it because I, I, I mean to include everybody or because I'm talking about some laws and policies where that's the word that's used in them and I can't change that word. So just having said that, we have great protection for breastfeeding in public doesn't mean that anybody has to breastfeed in public if they're not comfortable doing it, but the right is there uh, pure and simple. Um, public accommodations uh, where this is allowed include places like hotels, retail stores, restaurants, skating rinks, auditoriums, swimming pools that come, you know, breastfeeding can come up in public swimming pools, hospitals, clinics, libraries, you know, think any place where the public is invited in where the public is entitled to be. Those are places where our parents have the right to breastfeed in public. And like I said, no one has to. However, it's good to know that we have that, that protection to make breastfeeding parents more comfortable. Um, and also just because sometimes it's not a choice. Sometimes a baby needs to be fed <laughs> right now um, and there's not the ability to go to a private place. So, it, so no one should be concerned about that and no one should be hassled for it. Um, also, there's just a few exceptions that would not be included in places of public accommodation. 
for example, private membership clubs where you really are not entitled to go on the property anyway. You know, you have to be a member. Um, private schools might be in that category as well, and possibly some churches. But otherwise, if you're in a doctor's office waiting room, if you are in a public park, as as our photo shows here, you know, the variety of places that you would go to in your day, New Jersey's public breastfeeding law covers you. And even, you know, if you're not comfortable, the idea is we want that protection because we want to normalize breastfeeding and lactation as the way, you know, the biological way to feed human babies. So the more we see it, the more it becomes normal. So we're glad to have that protection and it's been in effect for a long time. If you're interested, um, if, if in, in the, the case that someone gets hassled for breastfeeding in public, there are legal remedies for that that are provided in the breastfeeding law. And they include that the person whose rights have been violated can go ahead and make a complaint in writing to their local board of public health. What happens is that triggers a, a case opening and a health officer will investigate and then could issue a summons to the, the person or the organization or um, the owner of the business who, who stopped you for breastfeeding in public, who violated your law, um, your, your rights, I mean. Um, in some cases, actually even financial penalties are possible. In general, they won't assess penalties on the first violation, but if it's a continuing thing, um, then that violator. Um, could be assessed penalties. There are these nifty breastfeeding rights cards I, I show on the screen in English and Spanish. It's possible to obtain them from the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition. If you go on the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition website, you can download them there. And at the end of this presentation, I'll have the list of resources and links for you. Uh, all the links and, and resources that I mentioned today will be on a couple screens at the end. There's also the right um, to have a lactation room in certain places in government buildings in New Jersey. So there's a New Jersey law that requires on-site lactation spaces in certain healthcare facilities, including hospitals, uh, nursing homes, and, and other facilities that the Department of Health regulates. Um, it would include a doctor's office, but we know that we already have a right to, to breastfeed in public in a, in a doctor's office, as indicated earlier. Um, uh, this law says there, there has to be an on-site lactation space in federally qualified health centers, one-stop career centers, um, medical assistance centers, uh, adoption agencies, and some other public facilities. There's also supposed to be signage in those, in those buildings and in those offices to let you know about that there is a lactation space available. However, if you don't want to use the lactation space and you're in the waiting room, again, that's okay. It's just that it's there for a parent who would rather have a private place. And in fact, let's say um, your baby is not with you or a person is using one of these facilities and their baby is not with them, that lactation space could also be used for breast pumping. So that's out there. Just um, if you're in one of these buildings, good to know that you could have a space um, for the, the, your need to... Um, breastfeed the baby or to pump milk for your baby. Okay, shifting to lactation support in hospital settings. Of course, it's so important for our uh, parents who are giving birth in the hospital, if their goal is to breastfeed or provide their milk to their baby. We want to make sure that they get the support they need in the hospital setting in that immediate postpartum period so that they leave the hospital breastfeeding or providing human milk. So it's good to know that since 2014, lactation support has been required in New Jersey maternity hospitals and birth centers and, and birth facilities. Um, and there's a variety of supports that are required. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what the New Jersey hospital standards require in that immediate postpartum period. They require the parent to be allowed to have skin-to-skin -skin contact during that really important first hour after the delivery, unless there's some medical contraindication. So for example, if the baby needed immediate medical care and needed to be transferred to another place in the hospital, um, you know, but but that's you know much more rare. The vast majority of our parents, um, their babies are with them after the birth, and so that there is that right place and and 
really every labor and delivery uh, staff person should be offering the parent um, the ability to get the baby skin to skin with them right after the birth, after they do what they need to do right after the baby is born, wipe the baby down, check the baby's temperature and weight and those those first things that they do, which can be done very quickly. And then the babies play skin to skin. In addition, support must be offered on positioning and latching during the first hour of the baby's life. Um, that support can be just putting the baby skin to skin and letting the baby's uh, usual inborn instincts start to find the breast um, if additional assistance is required, that can be given too, and that should be offered. Um, the support must be skilled, culturally sensitive, and in a language understood by the mother. And that's the, again, the regulations use the term mother. Um, so that means that uh, staff needs to be trained in uh, cultural humility and cultural competence, and that those additional language resources need to be available in the delivery room, uh, in the, in the, mother baby unit um, in order to be able to help and, and give this lactation support. Breastfeeding and human milk feeding patients are also entitled to get that care from trained staff. Pretty much anybody who's in the mother baby unit in the obstetrical unit who, who touches moms and babies need to be able to be trained and to be able to demonstrate breastfeeding support competencies. Um, all the patients are entitled to evidence-based information Teaching uh, in pumping or hand expression within four hours must be given if uh, parent and baby are separated. For example, if the baby has medical needs or if even the parent has medical needs that require them to be separated and, and not together anymore, or if breastfeeding has been ineffective. So that's really important. Um, we know that the evidence shows us that if mother and baby are separated and baby's not getting uh, to the breast or the breasts aren't being stimulated, it will really delay the parent's milk supply from coming in. Um, all, the, the standards also require referrals for community support upon discharge, including breastfeeding support groups. So it's so important to make sure that, that there's that warm handoff from the hospital to the community so that everyone has the ability to access that, you know, continuing breastfeeding support in the community once they're in their homes. And the, the standards require evidence-based practice on formula discharge bags. And the way that the, the standards are written, it's a little, it's a little, you know, maybe it's a little more gray. Doesn't mean that um, formula discharge ba ba bags are banned in the state of New Jersey. However, the evidence says that parents shouldn't be given formula discharge bags. So um, that means we shouldn't be giving them in hospitals. And the standards require even more lactation support. If you feel, or if a family member or someone you know, or interestingly, if you work in a hospital yourself and you see that your own hospital is not following these hospital standards, they're not giving the, the level of lactation support that you think is, is appropriate, complaints can be made to the New Jersey Department of Health Complaints and Hotline website. They can be made by phone, they can be made written, they can be made anonymously on the website um, so that if, you know, if that person wants to remain anonymous, that's possible too. This is the only way that the New Jersey Department of Health knows that there's a problem going on. Because unfortunately, there's no law or regulations in the state that tells the Department of Health that they need to go out and proactively enforce this. And there's really not too much funding for it either. Um, however, the Department of Health will respond if they get complaints. And we need for more parents to know about that. It's, it's interesting though that the onus is put on the parent when we can see, and look at this picture of, of a mother of twins getting support in the hospital. Can you imagine what her life is like when she gets home from the hospital, trying to adjust to life with two babies, learning how to feed them, learning how to keep them, their diapers changed, um, you know, so many things. So it's so difficult for you know a new parent who just got home from the hospital to be in this position where they have to also take care of everything else and make a complaint to the Department of Health. So we, we know we need a better system and we'll be looking at that. Okay, shifting gears a little bit. Um, once you get home from the hospital, of course, let's look at the, the various aspects and factors that are in place to help support the lactation journey then. And one of them, of course, that's a major concern is is there insurance and Medicaid coverage for lactation support services and breastfeeding equipment once you get home from the hospital? And the good news is uh, yes. 
for the most part, let's talk about it. So just looking at what's out there in terms of law to, to require lactation support from insurance companies and Medicaid, we have the Federal, Federal Affordable Care Act, which was enacted back in 2012. Um, and there's that coverage. There are more recent New Jersey legal requirements for private insurance coverage for lactation and breast pumps. And there's Medicaid coverage, at least there's New Jersey laws requiring Medicaid coverage. However, um, at this moment, there's only Medicaid coverage for breast pumps and not for lactation service support yet. I'll talk about that. So let's look first at the Federal Affordable Care Act coverage. So that requires insurance providers to cover without cost sharing. So they can't require deductibles or any sort of co-pays for this. It requires them to cover comprehensive, and this is the words from the, the law, comprehensive lactation support and counseling, as well as the cost of a breast pump. Okay. So we know that there's, that's the, the breast pump part of that seems to be working fairly well, that most um, pregnant people are beco become um, informed by their insurance company that they're eligible for an insurance paid breast pump. I know that there's some problems with that. However, uh, the comprehensive lactation support and counsel uh, counseling coverage, oh, not always so good. Uh, there are gaps. Um, what we're, we found under the Affordable Care Act coverage, some insurers will only cover lactation support from a doctor or a nurse. They're saying we only we can cover uh, what's provided by a, a licensed medical care provider. And at this moment, lactation consultants and counselors are not licensed by the state of New Jersey. Um, another gap is that sometimes only they cover manual breast pumps or other times um, they cover rental pumps, which are needed in certain cases, especially if the baby is medically fragile or born prematurely and really can't start um, going to the breast and breastfeeding so that the, that the parent is dependent on a pump to get their milk supply going. Um, however, sometimes they'll only cover one or the other, but not both, a rental pump or a personal pump. And that uh, lactation um, education classes are not always covered. So this has been going on for a while. Um, and we know that there are some gaps in the law and there are some insurance companies that are exploiting those gaps. However, um, the state of New Jersey made an effort to get in and breach the gaps uh, back in 2018, 2019, 2020. And there was a law passed that required in private insurance and Medicaid coverage for lactation support and equipment in New Jersey. And it, it, their provisions try to plug some of those gaps. So our New Jersey law requires many, but not all private insurance companies um, and the state Medicaid program to cover without requiring any cost sharing. Uh, number one, comprehensive lactation support, counseling and uh, consultation uh, for the duration of breastfeeding and in conjunction with each birth and also the cost for renting or purchasing electric or manual breastfeeding equipment. And when I say many private insurance companies are required, but not all, um, the New Jersey law doesn't cover if you work for an employer who is self-insured. However, that, that uh, then would kick back to the Affordable Care Act, then you should be covered under the Affordable Care Act. So one way or the other, just about everyone in New Jersey should be getting some coverage. A little bit more about New, New Jersey's law pump coverage details. Um, it says the covered pump should be a double electric pump unless uh, the insured requests a manual pump. Sometimes people, some people do prefer a manual pump. The coverage includes um, pump repair and replacement, two pump kits and proper size flanges. And it also covers that idea if you need a multi-user rental pump, um, and that those are so expensive that they're generally only rented. They're, uh, you know, more than $1,000. So insurance companies don't cover them. There's a picture uh, giving you an example of a rental pump at the bottom of the screen there. Um, so they also cover them when they're provided or recommended by uh, a licensed healthcare provider. And the top picture is more of a personal double electric pump, the kind that um, a parent would use at home to, with, in just the normal course of lactation. Getting more details about the lactation support that's covered. Um, it, uh, our New Jersey law says that lactation consultations in the hospital, in an office, or in home setting should be covered. Um, should cover in-person, one-on-one lactation counseling, but also telehealth support. And we know that there's many providers in the state um, that provide both uh, home visits and office visits and also even telehealth support. 
um, should also be covering group lactation counseling uh, as that's in addition to and not as a substitute for one-on-one. -on -one. So some people would like to get one-on-one -on -one support and then go and uh, get a group, uh, get into a group and get some more lactation support and they should both be covered. And then the law says that both a lactation consultation by an international board certified lactation consultant is covered and lactation counseling by a lactation counselor. Um, so there's, you know, there's different levels of lactation support with the lac International Board Certified Lactation Consultant or IBCLC is the most highly trained of all the providers. Um, and then there's lactation counseling, which is designed to be covering the sort of the normal course of lactation and, you know, the normal problems, nothing medical or requires um, more intense uh, lactation support. New Jersey law also deals with lactation rights in the workplace. And again, and I hope this is not confusing. Um, you know, I have a little bit of a background in the law, so I always lay everything out. But there's both state and federal laws that cover workplace lactation support. One in New Jersey is called our New Jersey Law Against Discrimination. And the other one, the federal law, and some you may have heard of it because there's been a lot of publicity about it since it was signed into law early last year. Um, and that's called um, the Pump Act. Uh, and that adds protections to what was in place before a, a law called the Break Time for Nursing Mothers Law. And so our New Jersey law just covers New Jersey. Uh, the Pump Act covers all 50 states. The Pump Act, I'll talk about the Federal Act first because it um, has, it's, you may have heard of it. Um, Pump is short for Providing Urgent, Urgent Maternal Protections for Nursing Mothers. The Pump Act requires almost all employers of all sizes to provide reasonable break time for employees to express milk. However, um, the break time may, need not be paid. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, at this moment, that's what the federal law says, um, requires the employer to provide a place other than a bathroom that's shielded from view and free from intrusion from coworkers and the public. And this protection is in place for up to one year after the birth of the baby who's getting the human milk. The Pump Act also clarifies that if an employee is not relieved from their duties to pump, for example, um, if a person is in a room and they're pumping, maybe even have a hands-free pump, and they're doing work or answering telephone calls, then the break needs to be paid. Um, and then it also counts as timed work for calculating minimum wage and overtime. The Pump Act also allows employees to file a lawsuit and seek monetary damages against an employer that violates the law. Okay, so, you know, great, great protections with the Pump Act. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about our New Jersey law. So our New Jersey workplace lactation law, as I said, it's called the New Jersey Law Against Discrimination. That law, also known as the LAD, so I'll talk about, probably use that term. The LAD is that same law that... Um, makes illegal discrimination against people um, on all on the basis of all statuses, race, color, creed, religion, you know, uh, sexual orientation. What happened is a few years ago, the term pregnancy was added. And then after that, more recently, the term breastfeeding was added. So these are two statuses against which you cannot um, discriminate against an employee for those statuses. New Jersey's workplace law has been providing strong protections for lactating employees. It says that the employers must provide reasonable accommodations, and the law spells out what those reasonable accommodations are. Reasonable break time to express milk. And reasonable is a term that often gets discussed. It doesn't say they get 15 minutes three times a day. It's reasonable break time, which really depends on the circumstances and the age of the baby. Um, the employer must provide a private place to pump. The law says other than a toilet stall, um, there's a there's a bill pending to change that language. But also really important, the New Jersey law says that the place must be in close proximity to the employee's work area. And that's important. What that means is they can't give you a room that's across campus, that's in a building, five buildings away. It needs to be close to the to the, the employee employer's uh, and employee's workplace. Interestingly, the New Jersey law does not set an age limit on the age of the child who's getting the human milk. So that means that if necessary, if the employee decides that they want to keep feeding human milk past a year, 
Um, we know the American Academy of Pediatrics now recommends that infants get breast milk for up to two years and beyond, um, that the, the employee can keep pumping past one year. So that's something that's stronger in the New Jersey law than the federal law. And our New Jersey law applies to all employers, regardless of the number of employees. The Pump Act has also made that clear um, because previously there was confusion about whether large uh, if, if lar only large employees, employers were covered. Um, so New Jersey law it really covers just about everyone, except if the, um, there's a, a really good reason. And then in those cases, employers can file and ask for an undue hardship uh, exemption, but those are very rare. The good news is that the New Jersey law against discrimination also bars discrimination and harassment in the workplace. So we know that sometimes the situation is the worker is given a place to pump and they're given their break time, but that sometimes there's subtle there's a subtle undercurrent of harassment going on. So for example, um, if the if the employee started, you know, they got their pump breaks but they started to um, find that they weren't getting the work in the, the workplace that they used to do, that they were being demoted, um, that their pay was affected by it. Um, sometimes it's not even the employer that's causing the harassment. Sometimes it's the people, the other people working in the workplace. For example, um, the employee stores their milk in the refrigerator, which they're allowed to do, and that they find that other employer employees in the workplace are dumping the milk. Or if they're... Um, whispering behind their back about this person being able to get breaks. So good to know that the lab also addresses those um, and that if that's happening on, you know, because of um, coworkers, that the employer is responsible for preventing that harassment or preventing a hostile environment in the workplace for um, a, an employee who's taking their lactation breaks under law. If there's a problem in the workplace, of course, the first thing to do is to provide information on the law to the employer and have a conversation about it. Um, you know, some, some employers know about the law. Some employers sincerely don't know about the law, although they should because um, they're, the information from the New Jersey Department of Labor talks about it. However, um, it's not the Department of Labor that enforces the law. Um, the New Jersey Law Against Discrimination is under the New Jersey Division on Civil Rights. So I put on this slide a copy of a, of a handy um, handout that is on the Division on Civil Rights website right now. But the exciting news is that I'm aware that they're working on putting more information on their website in the upcoming months, um, that they've drafted some more content to put on their website so that it's a real great landing place for anyone who has questions or problems uh, and wants to understand the New Jersey law better, both workers and employers. However, if your employer still doesn't, you know, go along with it and provide you your rights, if you find that um, there's harassment going on and nothing's being done about it, there are legal remedies. Um, the worker can file a complaint with the New Jersey Division on Civil Rights. Um, they could decide to not do that and go directly to court and file a complaint. And they're in a lawsuit, they would be eligible for more damages. So um, always, if there was an issue, um, it's a good idea to consult an attorney and then it could, the New Jersey Division on Civil Rights for more information about that. Resources, resources, so important. Um, in addition to the information on, that's on the Division on Civil Rights uh, website, the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition has uploaded some great information um, at that website, um, which I'll repeat at the end of the, the, um, the presentation. And then we also have some downloadable resources. There is an employee and an employer fact sheet. There's also an infographic that, that's available in English and Spanish that you can download. And there's a picture of it there. Um, very simple, one side of a page talks about, you know, breaks down the law and talks about your your rights. So we welcome everyone to use those and to reproduce them and to share them. Moving on to childcare settings. So glad to hear that there's interest and um, that we have participants today who are particularly interested in this. So, you know, we didn't even spend any time talking today about how great breastfeeding and human milk feeding is for both uh, parental, maternal health, and infant health. I mean, honestly, I could talk about that all day, but I won't. Um, you're here today because you've heard something good about it. Uh, so it's it's important for, you know, those who are, are giving human milk to their babies to be able to do it. And that also includes um, the support that's needed in early childcare settings. 
And it not only benefits the parent who's using the childcare setting, but it also benefits the childcare settings themselves to be supporting families. Um, it attracts families to their to those facilities when a childcare uh, provider can say, "I, you know, am breastfeeding friendly." Um, it also makes for better health in the center because we know that those infants who are receiving human milk are are less sick less often, and so they're they, they're not spreading as much illness within the childcare center. So we know those are concerns. So it's in everybody's best interest. However, the state of New Jersey currently lacks any written policies that support lactation and childcare. There's a few mentions in the licensing regulations about how to store milk, really just really says that any milk in the refrigerator needs to be used within 24 hours um, and that the milk is swirled and not shaken in the bottle and you know things, very basic things. But it doesn't talk about that idea that, um, that uh, Childcare staff should be trained in the storage and handling of human milk or anything about can a, uh, um, a lactating parent, when they come to pick up their baby, can they can they actually put the baby to the breast in, in the child care setting? The good news is that um, the New Jersey Division of Children and Families and others who are working on breastfeeding policy in the state are aware of that. And currently, uh, those licensure regulations are being readopted. Um, but there's, there is go a move afoot, which will be starting in the next year to update those regulations to require breastfeeding friendly practices. And that, I think that work is supposed to be done by the end of 2025, but it'll be starting before that. And we'll spread the word about that so that um, both child care providers and families can provide input to those so that we get the best, uh, the best breastfeeding friendly practices that we can. In the meanwhile, though, there are resources, tool, a toolkit, um, and uh, booklets for families and for child care providers. So this um, Breastfeeding Babies Are Welcome Here, that's a Creating Breastfeeding Friendly Child Care in New Jersey, is a booklet that was made um, in partnership. It was New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition with Advocates for Children of New Jersey, our wonderful partners, um, and the Reinvestment Fund of Philadelphia to put together a real handbook for childcare providers. And that can be downloaded from the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition website, from the Reinvestment Fund website, um, just showing the cover here. Um, so we hope that if you're interested in that, this can be used by families as well to bring it to their childcare providers and say, here's a written resource for you. And in the back of that booklet, there's really contains a really extensive toolkit um, of organizations, of resources, of posters, of books that can be shared with children about, you know, the normalcy of breastfeeding. Um, it's a really great resource. I hope you'll check it out if you're interested in that. And on the right-hand side, uh, Breastfeeding Works, Sending Your Breastfeeding Infant to Child Care in New Jersey uh, was a one, is a wonderful resource that was created by Montclair State University. And be, because we're partners with them as well at New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition and Central Jersey Family Health Consortium, um, uh, that's been uploaded to the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition website. So you can get that there as well. Great resources. Um, in the meanwhile, until we get those breastfeeding friendly practices standardized in child care centers in New Jersey. And finally, exciting news. There is now a training available for child care staff. Um, this was created by New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition, again, in partnership with the Reinvestment Fund of New Jersey. This training is available uh, is linked on the New Jersey CCAIS website, which is the New Jersey Workforce Development website. Childcare staff already know about that website because it's a place where they they look to to uh, get links to uh, trainings that are required um, and by the state of New Jersey. And I'll have a link to that again at the at, in my resources at the end. This is a great uh, training, five modules. It can be done on demand anytime uh, at the day or night. And uh, there is uh, a certificate that is given at the end for successful completion of it. Then the, there's credits that um, are available for child care staff. So uh, really excited about that. That's just come out in the last year. And other great news, uh, the U.S. Breastfeeding Committee, which is the NGO in the, in the United States that's doing such, such important and wonderful work to protect, promote, and support breastfeeding across the country, is collecting stories from parents and providers about how childcare influences the breastfeeding journey. Um, 
I had a little trouble linking it. Um, there's a hyperlink here. I just copied it really quickly because I just became aware of this. However, um, there's information on the U.S. Breastfeeding Committee web- website. It's usbreastfeeding.org. And if this is a great place to share those stories so that we can have better policies across the country to support lactation in child care settings, including child care centers and home-based child care as well. And last, in terms of policies, this is a coming soon. Stay tuned for coming attractions. New Jersey law requires private insurance companies, not all of them, again, if, uh, those mostly the ones that are not self-insured are not covered at this point, but also Medicaid uh, to provide coverage for, for pasteurized donor human milk. However, the implementation of that coverage has, is not in effect yet. It's been waiting for the New Jersey Department of Health to adopt certain regulations accrediting human milk banks. But I just want you to know that that's on the horizon. And it's really important in those cases for families who who really wanna breastfeed and are having difficulties, or particularly in those cases where the baby has uh, medical issues, is born prematurely or otherwise is born with a condition that's they're medically fragile. And in those cases, I mean, we say babies were born to be breastfed and every baby benefits from human milk, but you know, some of those cases where the baby baby's health is jeopardized, there's so, it's so important. It's medicine for the baby. So it's so important to increase the accessibility and availability of donor human milk to those babies because in some cases the, the parent can't provide, you know, can't produce enough in that right in those early weeks um, due to, you know, sometimes, you know, birth complications as well. And so we can help to bridge that by providing donor human milk until the parent can, has enough milk for the baby. So that's coming. Um, that will be that is being worked on the New Jersey in the New Jersey Department of Health. So uh, look for more on that. And in other exciting news, um, and this kind of takes us to where you know I know where I am today, and uh, the subject of this this um, you know talk with you today. Because the breastfeeding policies are so important, back in 2019, the New Jersey Department of Health created a partnership with Central Jersey Family Health Consortium and the New Jersey Breastfeeding Coalition to create a blueprint of goals for breastfeeding in New Jersey that would help to increase uh, breastfeeding support and initiation and duration. And what happened was um, a a team of us worked on it um, and that plan was submitted to the Department of Health in 2020, uh, actually in spring of 2020. um, And that is called the New Jersey Breastfeeding Strategic Plan. The goals of the strategic plan, again, were to serve as a blueprint to coordinate government efforts, but also to mobilize diverse stakeholders in all aspects, insurance, education, business, um, the family, the community, research, you know, government agencies. Uh, The idea was to prioritize actions to improve the state's breastfeeding initiation and duration rates. The goals were also to prioritize increasing breastfeeding initiation and duration by increasing statewide lactation support. And there was a special focus given to alleviating barriers among families of color and other underserved populations. So as I said, that was submitted to the Department of Health for their review, final review in spring of 2020. But we know what happened in spring of 2020, COVID happened. So uh, the the needs of COVID um, eclipsed the breastfeeding strategic plan at that point. However, the good news was that it was released, that the department did get back on it when the needs of COVID became less um, and the Department of Health released that that plan um, in late 2022. And now there are efforts to, you know, the Department of Health started their own internal efforts to implement the plan, but that's a part of the work that I'll be undertaking now um, and have just started that. So working with through Central Jersey Family Health Consortium with a grant through the Department of Health. So be looking for more work in the state of New Jersey to get these policies and laws um, working, to get people aware of them, to get them implemented. So let's just summarize today um, real quick. And then of course, I'm happy to take questions or comments. Um, so for today's takeaways, first of all, know that breastfeeding in public is legal. Second, that New Jersey has regulations that require 
of a great deal of lactation support in New Jersey's maternity hospitals and birthing centers. Next, that insurance coverage is available for breast pumps and lactation uh, cons consultations, counseling, and education. However, at this moment, Medicaid only has coverage for breast pumps. They're working on the coverage for lactation support. I've heard um, from folks in that uh, at New Jersey Medicaid that they're look to looking to get that guidance out in the next, well, in this year. So be looking for that and we'll get spread the word when that happens because that will be big. Also, New Jersey employers must accommodate lactating employees in the workplace under state law and under federal law, with very few exceptions. Um, also, policies are needed to support lactation in childcare. And to wrap it all up, uh, implementation of the New Jersey Breastfeeding Strategic Plan is beginning. So we hope that this work will all come together in a really positive way um, and that we have lots of, of state attention towards it at this moment. I have resources, maybe there's a way, Hannah can let me know if there's a way to share them. I know um, and I, if you can screenshot them or perhaps there's a way to follow up those who are attended today that we can get them out to you. But I've tried to give the link to all the um, resources that I've mentioned, uh, the, the rights cards, um, the, the information on the Division on Civil Rights website, um, there's even a copy of the regulations out there for you to read, uh, the New Jersey hospital licensing regulations, the information of, on the Federal Pump Act, the complaint uh, hotline uh, at the New Jersey Department of Health. That breastfeeding friendly childcare training, um, there's event numbers uh, at on the NJCCIS website, um, but you can also just search breastfeeding and you'll find it on the NJCCIS website. We made sure that that was the case and that there is already resources and a toolkit available. Happy to take any questions. If you have more questions right now, contact NJ Breastfeeding Coalition at gmail.com.